Remember, you know, during our lecture about the heart, I told you that the heart beats this way. Ba -boom. Ba -boom. Ba -boom. And squeezes out the blood from itself. Well, where does the heart squeeze its blood into? What was the type of the blood vessel that the heart squeezed its blood into? Remember, we had two different types of blood vessels that we discussed. Arteries and veins. Vein, yeah. What did the arteries do? And what did veins do? Veins take the blood away from the heart. You have it backwards. Yeah, arteries, arteries take the, the blood away from the heart. Bring it to the heart. So which, which, what type of the blood vessel did I just put my blood into from the heart? Uh, veins. No. Vein. Arteries, because it takes Arteries, because yeah. it takes it away, right? So every time I squeeze. Oh. So let's finish this. So every time the heart contracts and expand and uh, you know contract, <laughs> squeezes the blood from, from the its chambers so into the arteries. And what happens as I squeeze the blood into the artery, the artery being somewhat elastic, expands and goes. Mm. The heart goes like this, and the artery goes the opposite. So it reflects. So what happens? The blood is ejected into the artery from the heart and it expands. So it's the reflection of the heart's contractions and what happens? The blood pressure inside the artery increases, pushes against the walls of the artery and that's when you take the pulse, you actually feel your heart contracting. Mm -hmm. When the heart contracts, the artery expands. When the heart relaxes, the artery contracts. Mm -hmm. And that's your pulse. You see that? It's the reflection of the heartbeat, or rather, cardiac contraction. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. The only place where you can get the pulse is from the arteries. So let me first tell you about the different places where you can obtain a pulse. Can I erase this? Yes. Thank you. So I'm going to draw for you my favorite picture of a uh, grotesquely deformed little guy. And I'm going to show you where the different arteries are. And we start off with a face. Neck, shoulders, torso, abdomen, legs, and arms. Ah, and just to be polite, I'm going to draw myself a little leap over here. So, just to give this guy a little you know, coverage. <laughs> Big leap, right? So, our heart is in the chest. The main artery, called aorta, leaves the heart over here, makes a little loopity loop, and then goes downstairs, splits into two, one side goes here, then splits further on down, and this way. It's one of those times I wish I had a red marker. Then, from here we have three connections. One goes on top, splits and goes into the throat, and the other one goes here, splits into two, and then whatever. And then goes that way. All right? So this is how the arteries go. Now, I got to tell you something. Very few people know, but we have miles and miles and miles of blood vessels, arteries and veins, in the body. When I say miles and miles, I mean miles and miles. As a matter of fact, if I were to take every artery and every vein from the body, tie it together and stretch it out, it would take me two and a half times around the equator of the planet. So inside of you, there's enough blood vessels to go around the earth two and a half times. That's uh, 37,000 kilometers around the equator. So we have about close to 100,000 kilometers or about 70,000 miles of blood vessels. That's a lot. A lot of them are tiny, microscopic even, but nonetheless, they're there. So, we can feel the pulse here at the heart. We can feel the pulse in the throat. We can feel the pulse in the upper arm. We can feel the pulse in the wrist. We can feel the pulse behind the knee. We can feel the pulse usually over here. Frankly, you can feel the pulse just about anywhere. And as I did when I first was learning this, I experimented looking for pulse, primarily on my wife. She was unlucky enough to be with me as I went through college, and so I experimented on her. Trust me when I tell you, the best place to look for pulses is in the shower. 
and I'm going to leave it at that. So, the first one over here, over the heart, you can, you know, you ever look, uh, watch some of the westerns, somebody gets shot. And the doctor goes and puts his head, or her head, on the dead guy, listens to the heart. Because he's dead, Jim. <laughs> I'm talking about the old movies. Nobody touched the, the neck of the dead guy. And nowadays, too, if they, if they kill somebody uh, in the, you know, in the, in the gas chamber or, you know, electric chair, they take the stethoscope and they listen, uh, you know, to the heart, not to anything else, because you want to go straight to the source, because pulse is a reflection of the heartbeat. What better place for you to feel or listen to it than over the heart, okay? So this thing they call the apical pulse. Apical is over the heart. The next best thing would be this guy over here, and this one is called carotid. And people say it's in the neck. No, it's in the throat. Because when you say the neck, people usually grab for somewhere about the neck. There's no pulse there. It's in the throat. It's right here. And we'll, we'll play with it later. But it's right to the either side of the Adam's apple. Okay? That's the carotid. Next best thing will be in the upper arm. You know what? I'll just put that here. And that thing is called brachial pulse or upper arm. The one after that, oh, I forgot one more. Right over here in the groin, there's one more. And this guy is called femoral. Okay? And it's in the groin. in the groin, right over here, this side and this side, as you can see, it kind of splits. Then there's one behind the knee, and this one is called popliteal, popliteal pulse, behind the knee. And one more at the top of the foot, it's called dorsalis. literally means the back of the foot even though there is no back there's only top or bottom but you know have you ever heard of a dolphin and shark you know they have that fin and they call it a dorsal fin but it's on their back so I want you to understand for your final exam I will ask you to tell me at least three places where you can find the pulse select any one of these and it's all yours for your future career as a medical assistant, more than like, oh, I forgot one more in the wrist, didn't I? The wrist. <laughs> How could I forget that? The wrist is called the radial pulse, named after the bone called radius, where you feel the, uh, uh, where you feel the pulse. How could I forget that? That would be the most common place for you to check anybody's pulse in the doctor's office or yada, 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 yada. Today, they make it lazy for you and uh, easy. And they actually give you this thing that you put on the patient's finger. It, it measures their oxygen level, and it also tells you what their uh, pulse is. But still, there's nothing more effective than your own fingers, because the machine will always fail. You should always be able to do things manually. So, at least three places you have to memorize. If I were, if I had my choice, radial, brachial, carotid. Radial, brachial, carotid. Apical, femoral, you know, whatever. But those get a little bit personal with people. In a doctor's office, you don't necessarily go that way. Unless you're working for a specific kind of a doctor that wants you to make sure and measure all these pulses in different areas. Just listen to your doctor. Just don't be surprised uh, what they're looking for. Now, since primarily we're all going to be dealing with adults, regular pulse rate for an adult is anywhere from 60 to, I'm going to say 100. Okay. Anything below 60 is called bradycardia. Anything above 100 is going to be called tachycardia. I got it backwards. Tachycardia. Okay, brady and tachy are two very important prefixes. Brady means slow. Tachy, fast. Tachy means fast. Okay. 